let me go back again. Uh, this is cut 17 uh, from the World Economic Forum's Yuval Noah Harari, which he is one of the big guys in the World Economic Forum. He is the leader now of of AI philosophy and and futurist uh, philosophically. I just want you to hear about what he says this kind of technology can do. Now, this is two years ago. What this kind of technology can do. Cut 17. A system that understands us better than we understand ourselves can predict our feelings and decisions, can manipulate our feelings and decisions, and can ultimately make decisions for us. Soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. So what does that mean? <clears throat> well, it means they can hack you and know what you're thinking before you even know you're thinking. They will be able to predict because of all of the data they have on you and all of the real-time data they have on you, they will be able to predict. Anybody seen the movie Minority Report? Yeah, kind of like that. Um, beyond that, what he's talking about is hacking you. It will make decisions for you. Now, I don't want anyone making decisions for me. And that's the problem right now. The government seems to be making all of these decisions for us, telling us exactly how we have to live. But imagine propaganda that is so subtle, so good, and so tailored to you that you don't know it's propaganda. So all of a sudden you're saying, you know, these 15-minute cities, you know, honey, we don't ever have to fly again. We could sell our credits to rich people so they can fly. That's what he's talking about. There has to be a, uh, a law passed in Washington that protects our data. You need to own your own data. Now, what else could possibly go wrong? Well, let me tell you now about the first head transplant. This is an insane medical breakthrough. Uh, in fact, let's just play part of the, uh, the video on it. Here it is. The head transplant procedure involves removing a person's entire head containing the brain from their current diseased body and attaching it to the body of a healthy, young, brain-dead donor. Head transplants could provide individuals with severe medical conditions such as terminal cancer, paralysis, spinal cord injuries, or neurodegenerative diseases the opportunity to have a fully functional body while preserving their consciousness, memories, and cognitive abilities. The neurons are the longest-lasting functional cells in the human body. And according to our estimates, the brain is capable of lasting several hundred years, provided that the rest of the body remains young. <clears throat> Did you hear that? As long as the body remains young, the head, the brain, can last several hundred years. All we'll need are bodies. Now, these will be bodies of brain-dead people, I'm sure. We won't. I mean, you won't suddenly wake up with a, oh, I don't know, Chinese gulag body. No, that'll never happen. Um, but as long as we have healthy bodies, we'll be able... No, no, no. Some of us will be able to live forever. How exciting is that? Now, they said... You know, because brain, you know, brain body transplants uh, are uh, difficult. No, right now they're impossible. You can't do that. They've they've had one attempt recently in Russia, and I believe the guy went insane uh, and died. Uh, the same thing that happens with monkeys. They transplant the brains, or they transplant the heads of monkeys on other monkeys. And we can do it, 
but they all go insane. Uh, but nothing to worry about there. Science, that doesn't sound, does that sound spooky to you at all, Stu? Not at all. That sounds no. like, honestly, it honestly sounded like a promo for like a underground promotional campaign for a f- sci-fi film. Like that's, it didn't even yeah. seem real. 